engaged in government, uh, both our mayor and members of the General Assembly. I bring you the greetings of the Maryland delegation. Uh, I'm in, with the Maryland delegation. Um, we want to accept, express our wonderful excitement and joy at the opening of the John and Francis Peter uh, Angelos Law Center. We love the University of Baltimore, and we love what the University of Baltimore means to this city and to this state. And why do we love it? We love it not only because of this building, and the architect asked me, what did I think of it? And I used a very sound engineering term. I said it looks snazzy. It doesn't look snazzy, it's the S word, snazzy, snappy, and uh, just a wonderful sense of excitement. But we know that it will be award-winning for design, award-winning for environmental stewardship, uh, and award-winning, though, for the graduates that it will produce. What we love about the University of Baltimore, and also now this law school, is because it is an anchor institution for our community. It is it an anchor institution for the Mount Vernon Cultural District? It is an anchor institution in the Charles Street Corridor. It is an anchor institution for the wonderful and outstanding graduates that it produces. For too long, and I know the mayor feels this, I know Governor O'Malley feels this. What we see often in our media is about the pathology of our city within the Mount Vernon Cultural District. Just in the last three weeks, we saw the story of empowerment and what education means at the Baltimore Arts the other night. Stephanie, the mayor and I watched our boys and girls perform a rendition for, designed by Martha Graham herself and it was the first high school in America, the only high school in America, to be allowed to do this, and it was done right up there, up the street. Just a few blocks away was our great Peabody Institute, where they performed something called the Defiant Requiem. Verdi's Requiem, in which they show how people facing the Holocaust, with only their voice to offer defiance, sang their heart out to embarrass and shame the Nazis. All of this is going on here. And you come back to the University of Baltimore and this wonderful law school. This is Baltimore's law school. This is Maryland's law school. The men and women who go to this law school are gonna primarily stay in our community, practice law in our community, and they're going to seek justice for the people who live in this community. The Constitution might guarantee you to have a lawyer if you need it, but the University of Baltimore will guarantee that you will have a great lawyer if you need it. So we want to thank all who made it possible. The Maryland General Assembly and its fantastic commitment, the donors, the wonderful donors who made these outstanding contributions, and also for those of us in your congressional delegation. We don't do bricks and mortar, but what we did over the last couple of years was try to make sure that if you want to come into public service, we will help you forgive your student debt. If you want to be a public defender, if you want to work in environmental stewardship, if you want to stand up for the little guy and gal, you'll be able to do it and we'll forgive your debt. But what we need to be able to do is to make sure that in this country, not only should you have a lawyer, but the opportunity to become a lawyer should be available, accessible, and affordable. And that's what the University of Baltimore means. Thank you, Peter Angelos, for what you do in the law and in our community. Thank all of you, and thanks for giving me an honorary doctorate five years ago. I didn't have to pay for it one way, but they'll make me pay for it in another. God bless you, and God bless America.